On today's Techno Babble, troubleshooting techniques, making the invisible visible. This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now here's your host, Paul Clifford. Hi, and welcome again to Techno Babble. This is the show where every week I help you with video and graphic design for the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford, I'm your host, and I'd love for you to join the conversation and leave your questions or comments, so just do that below the video. Now, if you're subscribed to the audio or video podcast, which you can do by going to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash subscribe, there's no real good way to leave that below the video, so just go over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash tnb, short for techno babble, pick out a show, leave your comment there. That's a good way to do it as well. So as we're troubleshooting, you'll notice that despite what you see on the on movies, electricity is most of the time invisible. Sure, there can be an occasional spark, lightning you can see, but when you're dealing with uh, low DC voltages or even just regular household current, if you can see it, something has gone dramatically wrong. So how can you tell what's going on? First off, you can look for lights or anything in the user interface that help you, but there are a couple of other features. Uh, first off, when it comes to remote controls, uh, this is a remote control that I have here in the office, and you'll notice something about it. If you're looking at the video and you look on the end, there's no LED on the end. That's because this is an RF remote. This is an unusual type of remote. You won't find these very often. So seeing if this is sending a signal, basically I can just, oops, press the LED and see if it lights up. You might have actually heard some clicking behind me because that goes to a, a piece that controls the volume in this setup. So that's really all you can do, but happily most remote controls are not like that. Most remote controls are like this one. This is the one to my television you'll see a little LED on the front. Sometimes that's covered over with uh, like a plastic uh, that's translucent, but it's there nonetheless. So wouldn't it be great if when you pressed a button, you could actually see light coming out of there? I mean, you know, right now, I could press the button all I want, and I could look at it, and I won't see any light. Let me give you a quick trick. So this is being recorded on a camera, a DSLR in this case. Cell phone cameras tend to do this too. It is possible that it would be filtered out, but typically it's not, and that's this. So I'm going to shine this directly at the lens and press the button. Do you see that? It's blinking, but when I look at it in person, I can't see it. That's because while cameras have a smaller dynamic range, they see things that are dark as darker than they are to our eyes, and things that are bright as brighter than they are to our eyes. They also reproduce more of the spectrum than our eyes can. So they see infrared light as a blinking white light. So you can use a regular video camera or your cell phone camera even to tell if the batteries are actually good in the remote. Now that's just one of the tricks that you pick up over the years of making visible thing or invisible things visible. There are also cables that are manufactured that will light up when they have power going through. That's a way to make the invisible, the 
12 volts or the 5 volts or what have you visible so that you can see if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So that might be worth doing is having some of these cables on hand that if you have a problem you can temporarily replace them for troubleshooting purposes to see, hey, am I getting power through that? Another great way of making the invisible visible is the use of a multimeter. A multimeter is a piece of test gear that enables you to test and see numbers for voltages, uh, see numbers for amperages, etc. See if there's continuity and that way you can tell if electricity is flowing. But it's using a multimeter is a little bit more complex. So I'm going to save that until next time. If you like this content, you'd probably like my email newsletter, so head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S, and pick up a copy of a church tech gift of your choosing, along with a free subscription to my email newsletter. Remember, I provide this content for you free of charge, but if you'd like more in-depth instructions, head over to my store, trinitydigitalmedia.com slash store. And there you can find the resources that I've created for you, with you in mind, whether it's to help deepen your knowledge or help those around you that maybe aren't as far along the path as you are. So do that today. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with trinitydigitalmedia.com. Go out and change eternity. <music>